Today's video is all about the balance between quality and speed. We want to make really beautiful web comic pages and we want our audience to enjoy our story through pretty art, but we also have limited time. And especially if our stories are pretty long, we want to be able to get those pages out in not too long of a time. So how do we make sure that we keep a balance between making our art still look good and communicate what we wanted to communicate, but not taking forever to make the pages. Welcome back to Pencils and Stories. My name is Enrique and I make and teach comics. If you want to make your own comics, then subscribe to this YouTube channel for weekly videos. But how do we balance maintaining a level of quality, but also having a reasonable work schedule and being able to actually make our comic pages on that schedule and not having them take forever. I have a few tips for you that actually speeds up the comic process without losing quality. And I will dive into a demo now that will explain that further to you. But suffice it to say that you don't need to skimp on quality in order to make still make your comic pages fast. And there's one big thing that you need to keep in mind. And that is what is most important in your comic page. I talked about that a little bit more in other videos. I will link to them in the description. Every single time when you make a page, what is the most important information that you need to communicate with that page? And then every single panel is the same. And that will influence your decisions when it comes to what to draw and what to leave out. Without further ado, let's dive into the demo. So the first tip I gave you is to focus on what matters and it counts for your panels as well as for your pages as a whole. Why I give that as a first tip is because there's probably more detail and things you're drawing than you need to put in, <laughs> in your comic. You can probably lose a lot of stuff if you really dive in and start looking at things. It doesn't mean that you have to make boring pages or, you know, leave everything out. Uh, you still need to communicate stuff. You still need information. And sometimes that information is in the form of an elaborate background. And sometimes it is in drawing details. But very often we have a tendency to make our panels like full illustrations. Sometimes it doesn't even influence the speed, but it also influences the actual quality of the page. If you put in too much detail, you can lose clarity and you can lose, you know, a clear communication of what you're trying to get across. So let's actually dive into a page, which is ironically one of my later pages. I have earlier pages that I think are more successful in communicating clearly, just being better in general in what it is trying to do, uh, even though it has more awkward drawings and stuff than this page. I actually consider this page one of my weakest ones. The busyness. Like, look at these areas where there's just so much happening, especially here. Ooh. <laughs> We'll get to that later. Um, like, it's not all bad. I have some, some panels where I let your eyes rest. <laughs> like this one, for example. And then this doesn't have a background, thank goodness. One thing that this page is trying to do at least still comes across, and that is focusing on the emotions of the characters and especially the contrast between these characters. They both arrive in the city after a long while and they just have complete opposite reactions of being there. And that is something I wanted to get across. So at least it, it still communicates pretty clearly. We're drawn to faces and these are pretty, pretty big faces with a lot of emotion. So that draws a lot of attention. So I still think this page is, um, is successful in communicating what it wants to communicate. But also there's a lot of fluff that could very easily be left out and it would have made the page better to look at, easier on the eyes, and it would actually just be clearer. So that is the first tip. If you don't need a background, don't draw it in. Um, be careful with texture. <laughs> uh, that's especially pitfall for me, for myself. Uh, I love drawing hair, you guys. <laughs> I just love it so much. <laughs> that, that's the first tip I would give you. And then the second one is design choices. Design choices really add up over time to being, you know, costing a lot of time. And you might think, well, just a little bit of detail in my character design doesn't really matter that much. 
But just, like, for example, these are characters that are not in my comic a lot. So I actually, you know, put some more detail in if they would be in my comic. Like, this one is not too bad, but especially this character, there's so much detail. Like, she has a necklace, she has earrings, you know, these this little uh, part of the sleeve is a different color, you know, than the rest. Um, all of that stuff, like, even the buttons, like, she has, how many are they? Six buttons. Like, I would constantly have to think, like, oh, how many buttons were it again? You know, and then just drawing the buttons is, like, super fast, right? But just imagine drawing a few buttons, this necklace, this earring. Let's say it takes me five seconds or something to draw that in. That's not a lot. <laughs> but then think about an entire comic, and my comic is hundreds of pages. Um, think about just 10 panels where this character appears in five seconds times 10 panels is 50 seconds, is one minute. Now think about if she was a main character, how many minutes that would be when you have hundreds of pages. That adds up. It just adds up a lot of time. So if you have a character design, make sure that if you put in detail, it actually, it, you know, enhances the story in some way, for example. Like if you have a very extravagant character who really, like for who jewelry is a big part of the character, then by all means, put jewelry on them. Maybe make it something that you can draw in a few strokes. Not something elaborate. Same goes for things like weapons that appear a lot or props. Things in your environment, a certain ornaments in an interior that comes up a lot. Like when you're designing, think about this stuff. Think about how much you need to draw something. Think about how many buckles you want to draw in one comic. <laughs> Earrings. Um, shoelaces. Like, be, be careful with that stuff. Be careful with the shoelaces. Other little shortcuts that are really helpful in your character design. Like, I don't draw irises in my character's eyes. Noses, very, very simple. Um, for this character in particular, like, every single character who has dark hair, I will just have a ink block of color. Like, I will have black ink. It saves me a lot of shading, a lot of texturing. Uh, even though I love drawing hair, so I still don't know if I regret this choice. <laughs> um, but, uh, but it saves a lot of time. Like the men don't have lips. Uh, and then here, this is interesting, I actually don't draw the ears like that anymore. It's like, why all this detail? Why are you drawing noses that look like this, you know? I gave Robbie big ears. <laughs> In general, but I might have overdone it a little in this case. Um, but this is how I draw ears lately. Two lines, that's it. It looks like an ear, right? Like, why do you need all this elaborate stuff? Like, if you have a realistic comic, it makes more sense. My comic is semi-realistic. I don't even draw irises, man. These characters don't even have irises. So why would I, why would I render that entire ear? You know, if you have a realistic comic, or you have a comic that's like three pages or something. Go all out, by all means. Paint everything in and render everything very realistically and, you know, do whatever you want. But if you make a comic of like a hundred pages, you know, take all the shortcuts you can think about. And, you know, you know the way you draw, it makes, it makes a lot of difference as well. Let's go back to this hair. <laughs> Let's just go back to this hair. Let's take this one because this is the worst one of all of these. Um, first of all, this panel is already very busy, right? Like, look at all those people. Look at what's happening, you know? But if you want to get that across, like, all these people are coming off board. And I need a large crowd, actually, in the in the next uh, scene that is coming up. So this actually, you know, this actually serves a purpose. But what's the purpose in having, like, this giant hair texture? Like, there's no purpose there. Um, also, it just, it makes this panel that's already busy, even busier. So 100%, you don't need all of that. And I, it's like my pitfall, guys. I love drawing hair so much. Like, come on, it's fun. But you don't need it. <laughs> time, 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 time is important. So, what I would do, I would probably still keep this line here because this actually indicates, 
uh, depth. Like she has a bun. What do you even call that? Is it a bun on her on her head? Um, you know, just have the basic hair shape, which is this. You know, no more detail. You can already tell, like, even though it doesn't match the style anymore, because I do have a lot of ink texture in there. But even now, it already looks so much better on the eye. Uh, there's already a lot of tiny shapes. You want to have some large shapes in there as well for interest. Yeah, make it a little bit interesting and not just make it noise. That's all the same and the same size and everything. So this is already looking better. Um, then obviously to make it a little bit more 3D. So then obviously this is not the right brush, but um, you know, it still needs some texture because that's my style. And then she has the bun. All you need. That's all you need. It's already so much better than it was, right? Just compare these two. Another point I wanted to make is about rendering. And I mean putting in shadows and highlights and stuff. Because look at what I do here. Let's go back. <laughs> Get to my red. Look at what I'm doing. Shape. 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 There's a shadow here, there's a shadow shape here, there's a shadow here, there's a shadow here, here, here. Like, I will just look at this bun, I will zoom in and go, oh, there's a strand that goes over here that, that casts a shadow. This is how I render, literally. This is like my, one of my biggest pitfalls is just automating that stuff, sit down, not think about what I'm doing anymore, but just go realistic, you know? I will just go logical. Like, oh, the light's coming from over here. It casts a shadow here. And that's how I render. It's like, oh, there needs to be a shadow here because that's like scientifically right, right? And I even do this without reference. So I probably make a ton of mistakes as well. But see how busy this is? See how busy the shadow is? Oh my goodness, so many shapes. Like here was very apparent to me as well. Like I would think, oh, there's a piece of hair here that's like an overhang. So it creates the shadow. But now I have this shape here. What's that shape doing there? Like that makes no sense. Like it's just there because my brain says it needs to be. <laughs> but that's not art, guys. Um, I mean, it can be if you want to be super realistic and hyper render everything, but obviously that's not my style. This is not, this is not smart to do at all. Um, especially when it comes to clarity and design and letting this read well for the eyes, letting our eyes go in a, in a logical fashion th through the page without everything turning to noise. Like I could just um, make it one shape and then let the thing stand out that you want to stand out. Like maybe like this, like have a nice little rim of the ear stick out of there, but then have this. And then just a little bit here in the light. And the rest is all in the shadow. And instantly you create so much more form. Most of all. Because you're thinking about like still make it 3D. Like don't just don't just plop a shadow in there and go like oh like this. But actually think still think about form putting this to multiply and you can already see like the shape is so much easier on the eyes than it was but if you put this thing these things like in the shadow and you, you make a lot of um you make a very strong point of where the shadow and light is you could even lose the entire texture in this like maybe keep some of the strands so you know how the hair is going Things in shadow and things further back, but I'm getting to that. Things in shadow don't actually have that much detail. It pulls all the values closer together and creating like less, um, you see, you don't even miss all that texture. It doesn't matter. Like in painting, they would even lose some of all of this. And then you just have some nice color gradients or something in there. Like do this. In, in painting they call that losing the edge. So especially when things are in shadow, 
or fur, further away and like bathing in light, um, you don't need that much detail and you don't need all that texture and stuff. So for the hair that we just um, created over here, that's now way simpler, just think in shapes. Make some nice shadow shapes. And then don't go rendering at all. And then maybe just like this. See, done. Details overrated, very overrated. And it can actually make things more confusing. Um, especially if you don't think about what you're doing like I. <laughs> Often am. Um, but see how much nicer that, look, that looks on the eyes? Oh, it's so much better to me. <laughs> um, again, you know, same here. It's so busy in the background, man. You could I, What I could have done here is make everything, because they're slightly further back, I could just cheat a bit. Normally you wouldn't really see that effect too much. You get a really light blue. I'm gonna put it to ooh, screen or something. Yeah. See that effect happening? Like separating them a little bit. It is still a little bit too much. But just slightly. See that? That already looks less busy and now you just work with color. You just made all their values lighter, separating them from from this. It's more uh, less saturated too than they are. Like instantly better, and I'm I'm getting to I'm getting to backgrounds now because if you look at all of this, like look at this, guys. I drew a fence in here. <laughs> I drew, I drew a fence because you know oh there's a lot of steep rock but look this is how you see it on the web like nobody's gonna notice that it's it's just it's so much detail for absolutely nothing and then the same with these houses like yeah sure it looks pretty all of that here but you don't need that and that's my point if you put in the like the atmosphere like for example if you look at something from a great height to look at the horizon on a very sunny day like there's so much atmosphere in between you and the far point that everything starts to become hazy. Do you know that effect? Everything kind of um, has like this, this, uh, this hazy layer on top of it. And the further you go, the more intense that becomes. Like I'm looking at like a sunny late afternoon now and like the horizon is, is a complete gray mess. When it's very clear, in this very bright blue sky, the background will become way more blue. Like everything, all the colors will be pulled towards blue. And now it's more like it's late afternoon, so the sun is slightly setting. Uh, it's more yellowish now, but you know, you lose all the detail. I hardly see any detail. Like there's apartment buildings in the back. I don't see the windows anymore. I just see a shape of a building and that's it. And I will get to that later on a page where I actually did it right. But in this page, I obviously did not. So let's see again, a nice light blue, put it on here. And this is where you can start seeing where you need to lose detail because, you know, I'll put it a little bit further in the back, put it to screen. So the line art is still kind of like there. Um, because what I did do is I did color the line art. So it wasn't too like harsh. Uh, on the eyes in terms of like line work because that will pull it all further towards us again and then when I color the line art it looks further back already but I should have really like, really put it even further back. You can see you can almost not see all these pine trees anymore or the difference between these two houses. Like you could just make it a, a house village shape here. House house without all the details in the windows and stuff and then shape and then maybe one texture line that's it that's all you needed you know don't do all this detail in the rock <laughs> it's too far away and it's not important 
That is, like, back to point one, it's not important. It doesn't communicate anything, all that detail. So just, just thinking about how many unnecessary lines I put in my comic. Look at these eyebrows. Uh, like, it's easy. It's very fast and very easy done. But if I do my all my eyebrows this way, <laughs> it adds up. And it's unnecessary and it's busy looking. I know it's a lot of skin with minimal shading, but still, like, these eyebrows are so over the top, heavily textured. <laughs> like, don't need that, you know. Done. Let's go to a page where I actually can show you what I mean with losing detail in the back. This panel. The further back you go, you see the value change. You see the color, and that obviously has to do with the value, the color is changing uh, because of uh, atmosphere. Um, like it all, it all influences how, how the colors look, but you, there's like, it's like lighter in the back and um, less texture as well or less detail I should say and here you have a lot let me let me go back to red real fast um, like here there's more detail because this is actually really close to us and a detail here and then I still wanted to have kind of like a cityscape over here but look at it's just dots because it's pretty far away we're up in the mountains so no, you don't see that entire city. <laughs> like there's some boat texture and then some water texture and then here all the texture stopped. I only did it a little bit, uh, very lightly and then the most, the rest with color. And then this is an entire city on a hill, but it's, uh, it's just a shape because that's what things do in far background. They become shapes with almost no detail, like I mentioned before. Like when, when there's a lot of atmosphere going on. So the further back, everything becomes lighter and a little bit more greenish blue. Um, and then the further we go towards here, the more texture we get. But even here, like there's still in the shadows, there's still a lot of detail. I actually, I actually don't really need that. Let's get rid of all these lines here and see if anything changes. Leave this uh, nice light spot here. And the same goes for this. See? See that it doesn't matter. And it actually becomes still a little bit easier on the eyes. Like you can lose so much detail, either in far, far background or um, in shadow. That's the last thing. Like I've already prepared this page. The last two panels here kind of illustrate that. See, because I forgot actually to work with atmosphere here. So it's it's a very harsh, these are very harsh lines and it's clouds. This is a far horizon where the, where the, the water meets the sky. Like this is, should not be, <laughs> it's black. And here too, very harsh line over here. And this is like the far background. And all I need to do is like put a layer of, put a layer of, uh, what is it, beige? <laughs> like yellowish um, white light on top of it. And already A, it, it, it creates so much more depth. See the difference? See how much farther away it becomes? See how much easier our eyes can make out the shapes? I could even go in the farthest line back here and do the same thing, just less intense in the background and you will create even more depth. Again, see how this starts to disappear? So you actually don't need all these lines and the shape would just have been enough. That's what you get when you just putting, putting a layer of white on top of it, kind of to see if it improves your color. And it's the same here. Look at the texture in the shadows, oh, especially here. There's a certain comic style where people actually make 
Like, remember what I told you about the hair of my characters being very dark and me putting in a black shape for it? A lot of people do that with shadows in general. Like, they make the shadows black. Um, you will need a very thorough knowledge of uh, balancing your compositions in terms of positive and negative space, in terms of uh, leaving things open to be colored and making things black. If you have that skill, and if that if that's in your style, because obviously that's not my style. It's just not how I work. And I like making shadows very colorful. So I would not use that. But a lot of people use it with, with great looking results. But just imagine like putting in some nice dark. Like it, it already makes the image pop a little bit more. But it's the same, it's the same principle. Uh, you can see the detail disappearing in the shadows. So you already know that you don't need all this. You can just erase all these lines. You wouldn't have had to ink it in and draw it in. Like, oh, the amount of time I could have saved. Same principle. Lose the detail in the shadows. Lose the detail in the, in the overexposed uh, lights or far backgrounds. Because you don't need to. And it doesn't add any information whatsoever. <laughs> so it doesn't actually help you. Quick recap. Uh, focus on the stuff that matters. If it doesn't really give us any information and it's not necessary, drop it. Uh, make smart design choices. Don't make things too hard for yourself. A great way to study this is to study 2D animation. Because they need to draw characters 20 million times more than we do even. And they are masters in simplifying and simplifying well without it becoming boring. Because I don't mean with simplifying, I don't mean making things so simple that it becomes boring. I mean learning design and learning to simplify in a way that it still creates a lot of interest in your character design, but it's not super elaborate to draw for you. So you save a lot of time. And 2D animators and character designers are masters at this. See how they create interest and, you know, strong shapes. That's a very big key. You see, quality doesn't necessarily mean more detail or more rendering and more shadows and stuff. Quality comes from powerful, simple design in your compositions, your character designs, like a simple panel can speak so loudly and you don't, you don't need all the detail. You don't need it. What you need is a very, very clear idea of what you want to say and then communicate it as simple as possible. And that's the goal for this. Like you don't have to lose quality in order to gain speed, but it is a hard, it is hard to do. Simplifying is hard. It's still one of my biggest goals that I'm working towards to be able to simplify in such a way that it still becomes interesting but also saves me a lot of time it saves me a lot of detail and texture and stuff and, but you can you can learn it everything can be learned and simplifying is just one of those artist skills that come with practice and that come with time focus on what matters make smart design choices make use of shortcuts where you can lose detail lose T lose texture, lose things that you don't need, and then make use of light and atmosphere and value and color to lose some of that detail. Like make it a sport to just lose all the stuff that you don't need for either storytelling, information that the, that the audience needs or interest, uh, like visual interest. Don't need it for any of that, drop it. <laughs> That's, I think, my biggest takeaway for you for this video. I hope it was helpful. That was it for this demo. I hope you found some new tips to incorporate in your own webcomic process. If you want to get started on making comics, I'm working on something exciting, which is my new course, How to Start a Comic, that I will launch on Kickstarter. The course takes you through the entire pre-production process. And when we're talking on the subject of not doing too much stuff that you don't need to be doing and thus saving a lot of time. My course is specifically designed to help you 
come up with all of the essentials before you start making your pages and then actually diving into making pages as well. So if you're interested in that course, because it will have a special early bird price in my Kickstarter campaign, go to the link in the description that goes to my notification list. It is not the same as my email list, though you can sign up for that as well. Uh, but it's just a list that I send an email to the moment my course launches. That was it for this week. Thanks so much for watching. If it was valuable to you, leave it a thumbs up and leave a comment if you have any questions or if you just want to drop a note uh, and want to connect. I appreciate it so much. It all helps to make my channel grow and help more people make comics, which is why I do this stuff. And for now, I want to thank you for watching and have a great day and go and make some comics.